kurz gesagt. There. That's... Pretend I said that. So they made a video, is meat bad for you? Is meat unhealthy? And it's pretty amazing. <laughs> it's a pretty amazing video just in terms of ultimately being reducitarian, ultimately recommending that people severely limit their meat uh, consumption. At the end of the video, they basically tell people to eat meat no more than once or twice a week. So if you feast on meat no more than once or twice a week, you should be good. You know, when I first watched this a few days ago, I was like, oh yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, cool. And just kind of went about my day and I was like, eh, I probably won't make a video about it because there's not really a whole lot to talk about. But I'm, I'm finding that because there's been so much positive uh, vegan coverage and like flexitarian coverage over the last couple of years or so, I find that I'm getting more uh, I guess, normalized to it. And it's not affecting me as much anymore like it should be. And I, I'm trying not to do that. And so I, I realized I was doing that with this video. And I was like, wait, this is actually really damn cool. This is actually a pretty big deal. You know, this video has only been out for a few days now. It has 3.5 million views. You know, they have a lot of subscribers, but that's not, it's not really a useful metric because there are tons of channels with a lot of subscribers that get shit for views, right? Um, so you really want to look at like, views. Um, yeah, they, they got like over a million views, I think in the first like 28, 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. And they're basically telling people, Hey, don't eat like barely eat any meat. So I'm trying to still be, you know, hyped about this stuff because it's, it's a big deal. You know, this is not something that we saw even just a few years ago. So yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are going to be some takedowns from vegans. I'm sure there are going to be takedowns from carnivores and keto and paleo people, you know, people who are you know, really into meat, really, really into their meat, right? Um, I'm sure they're they're very pissed as well. In fact, that's what they said on Twitter, that everyone is mad. <laughs> like Everyone is really, really mad at them for this video. The vegans are going to be mad because they're saying that meat is healthy, just, you know, to limit it. And then the carnivores and keto people and whatnot are going to be mad because they say that, you know, red meat is unhealthy and that ideally you would want to eat like chicken and fish. And again, that, you know, you should limit it, which they're like, no, eat as much meat as possible, right? I mean, it varies, right? It's like the carnivore people, obviously, are like just eat animal products. That's, you know, most keto and paleo people are not saying that. They're big on like vegetables and stuff too, right? But point is, a lot of people are going to be mad about this video. I am not. I think there are some things that are a little bit misleading, and I think that's just because of the nature of the video. When you're doing this sort of infotainment, edutainment sort of thing, there are certain criteria criteria that you have to follow. And one of those is to keep the information as simple as possible and to keep it as short as possible, right? So if you're making a video, like you don't want to do a 20 or 30 minute video about this, which you easily could. I mean, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty on whether or not meat is healthy, you could easily make an hour long video on just that topic alone. But how many people are going to watch that? Are you going to get 3.5 million views on a video like that? Probably not. And there's a good chance that you're going to lose a lot of people and you're just going to confuse a lot of people, right? I mean, a lot of my videos, I like to talk about nuance and all of that. But I realize that a lot of people are not interested. A lot of people are going to tune out. And a lot of times you can just be left more confused than you were going into it. So that's a problem, obviously, for people like me who are making 20 to 30 minute videos and just going on and on and saying, oh, this thing, but however, also, and don't forget about this. And what about this? You know, yeah, I, I get it. It can be, uh, you know, confusing at best. But that doesn't mean that these sorts of little, you know, snippet videos are perfect either. It, you know, if you're not talking about nuance, you can lose a lot, right? You can lose a lot of the details that could be important. There are two major things. Well, there's one little thing. They talk about the Inuit and they say that they eat a purely meat uh, based diet. The Inuit, for example, are able to survive in extreme climate conditions thanks to a purely meat based diet. Since they consume the whole animal, including the organs, they get every single nutrient they need, including vitamin C. Which I think can be taken as that they only eat animal products, which is not true. And I assume they're talking about a traditional Inuit diet, but um, they do actually forage or did actually forage for some foods like berries and whatnot. So they weren't eating a purely, you know, 100% animal based diet, but they are right that they were getting like their nutrient needs 
overwhelmingly from animal products and they were getting vitamin C from uh, organ meats from liver and and whatnot. Point is, it, it that doesn't really matter, right? But it is a little it is a, a little thing. Something that I think is possibly a bigger issue is when they say that fish can be eaten as part of a balanced diet. As part of a balanced diet, fish can be eaten regularly without worries. That's true, but it's, you know, again, there's a little qualifier. It's certain fish, right? That there are certain fish that you want to avoid completely due to high levels of mercury, things like shark and tuna, these really big fish, right? It's due to bioaccumulation. I talked about this in um, the Foley Rock Christina video, the fish video. I don't know if I put that up yet, actually. I've recorded this after that one, but I may put this one up first. So pretend I didn't say that. Point is, there are certain fish that you want to avoid. Ideally, you want to eat fish with uh, lower levels of mercury. So again, it's it's a it's a little thing, but it could be important. You know, maybe someone's like, oh, I should go eat fish, and they just start eating a bunch of a bunch of shark. Probably not. The other thing, again, just uh, kind of misleading, um, is not distinguishing between relative and absolute risk. So they mentioned that study on bacon that supposedly found that eating, I think, a few pieces of bacon a day increased your risk for colorectal cancer by 18%. Now notice how I said that. <laughs> I said increased your risk by 18%. Each extra 50 grams of processed meat per day increases your risk of cancer by 18%. That is incorrect. The 18% is a relative risk. The absolute risk, which means the risk for you personally, is actually less than 1%. So it increases your risk personally by less than 1%, which is still meaningful. And the relative risk still matters when we're talking about, you know, a social perspective and in terms of everyone's health, right, which is important. But when you word it like that, a lot of people are going to take it as, oh, wow, like if I eat bacon, it's going to increase my increase my risk for colon cancer by 18%. That's insane. And this is nothing new. I mean, I just talked about this, exa this exact study too, <laughs> this exact reference just a few days ago. Uh, it was on PCRM and they did the same thing where they said they didn't say your risk, but they said that it increases colorectal cancer risk by 18%. Again, a lot of people are going to take that as, wow, that's increasing my personal risk by 18%. So yeah, that's a little bit misleading. I mean, it's, you know, you don't want to be eating a lot of bacon, obviously, right? You don't want to be eating a lot of processed meat. It is unhealthy. Uh, the risks definitely outweigh any benefits of what, like just a little bit of protein. Pretty sure a lot of other foods have protein, right? But still, we don't want to mislead people. And, you know, you run the risk of, if you're making people think that it's 18%, their personal risk and then they find out that's not true because they read some person's keto blog or you know whatever people may think that you're not trustworthy and they may start to doubt all of the evidence surrounding processed meat and that's not good i mean as far as the meat being healthy you know they say that you know essentially that chicken and fish are are healthy and are your best choices i mean you guys know how i feel about this you know i'm, I'm not gonna say that vegan is the best diet in terms of health. Um, I think that a plant-based diet with some animal products is is pretty darn healthy. The reasons to eat vegan are strongly in the like ethics and uh, environment camp and avoiding antibiotic resistance, which is something that we should be really concerned about. It is, it's super, super bad, guys. We really, really need to stop feeding all of these antibiotics to animals. And we need to stop asking for them as well. Americans are really, really bad about asking for antibiotics when we don't need them. And I think a lot of that is just because we don't really understand what an antibiotic is. We don't really understand uh, medicine very well. We just want a drug. We just want something to treat our cold, right? But yeah, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty awesome video, you know, telling people that, yeah, you know, as long as you're only eating one to two servings a week, like you're good. That's pretty amazing. I also really like the recommendation to actually track when you are eating meat to see how much you're actually eating. And many of us eat much, much more. If you're not really sure, make a small note whenever you eat meat for a week or two. You'll be surprised how much it really is. I think that would be so useful for everyone to do just to see you know, because we're really, really bad at tracking that kind of stuff. Even if you're reduced hair and you probably have a better idea because you're probably paying attention. And obviously vegans, you know, we know how much meat we're eating. But um, I think it's really good because 
We're really, really bad at gauging that kind of stuff. I mean, just look at calories. We are really bad at estimating how many calories we're actually eating. That seems like a good first step. Even if you're not, you know, totally into the idea of reducing your animal product consumption or meat consumption, even if you're not, eh, you don't think you're really ready or like, eh, I don't know if I'm really into it. It's still a good idea just to, just to see exactly how much you're eating. So I guess that's it. Thanks for watching guys. Support the channel. Patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. Subscribe. That's actually free. <laughs> and I'll have a new video soon. The amount of hair that I pulled out of the shower drain. Oh, trying not to get real sad about it, but I'm kind of real sad about it. It sucks, man. This, I, I'm just waiting. I don't, I can't remember how long it lasted after toddler was born. Um, you know, I think it started around two to three months, which is about when this started, when I noticed it, right? Although I noticed it later with toddler because I wasn't expecting it. And then I think I was editing a video and I was like, what the hell? It looks like, what? It looks like there's some hair missing like around here. What's going on? Uh, and then I noticed in the shower, like, wow, I am losing a lot of hair. Uh, but this time I was waiting for it, right? So I noticed immediately, but I can't remember exactly when it stopped. Oh my God, I'm so hungry. My stomach. <laughs> um, I can't remember exactly when it started to, to settle down. I feel like it only lasted for like a couple months or so. In happier news, my uh, stretch marks are fading away. <laughs> I didn't get any stretch marks with toddler. Um, even the stretch, you know, like I've, I've got giant boobs, obviously, and they grew very fast. I went from nothing to ginormous, like over a summer. Um, and I had some amount of stretch marks, but they've like faded away. You can't even see them. And I've got some little ones like on my the side of my waist kind of, but again, they're like so faded. You can't, unless you really look for them, you can't see them. But with tiny baby, I actually got some stretch marks like on my stomach under my belly button. And one kind of looks like a shark bite. <laughs> looks like teeth marks, like in this kind of oval shape. It's real weird. Um, but they've actually, my partner says they've faded a lot. I, I'm not sure. I think they've faded some, but, um, but those, those don't bother me so much. It's really just the like poofiness, you know, like my stomach is still just so just poofy and big. My toddler actually said something about my big belly. I was like, you think my belly's big? And they were like, yep. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. I feel great. You know, my partner's like, it's the same thing happened after toddler and it's going to go, you know, it takes about a year, but it's going to go down and it's going to look like it did before. And yeah, that did happen with toddler, but I feel like it's worse this time. I mean, I have nothing to verify that. I don't have pictures from before or anything. Cause oh my God, why would I take pictures? <laughs> why would I do that to myself? But I just feel like it's poofier this time. You know, I feel like it's worse. The partner's like, no, it's not. It's the same but maybe they're just trying to make me feel better. It's a little thing. I know in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter, but I'm shallow. You know, I care about how I look to some degree and <laughs> having a little like poofy, poochy, outy lower belly is like not, not for me, man.